everyone, my name is Nicole and I am a wife, mom, and teacher in the Midwest. And today we are working in my classroom. All right, so after being out of my classroom for a couple weeks, this is what I came back to. The custodians had pushed all of the desks and stools and everything out of the way so that the room could be painted and the carpet got cleaned. So I kind of have a blank slate to start with since I moved to classrooms this year. So here is my starting point. quite a bit of progress here while there's still a ton left to do. Um, just a backstory is that I actually had to move classrooms this year. So I normally wouldn't have to do this much work, um, but I moved into a totally different room. So I had to take everything off the walls and the, and the bulletins and everything. So let me show you what I have for my desk setup. With COVID restrictions relaxing here where I live, I am just so excited to get the kids back into groups so they can collaborate again. So these are the kids' cubbies. Um, so they each get like a hook and a cubby. And last year, I had enough room. My cubbies were set up a little differently. And my cubby bin fit right in perfectly. And now it's kind of like I'm afraid if they put anything in the front that it'll just fall out. So I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna leave them sideways or what I'm gonna do. Um, because this isn't a ton of room for stuff. But, you know, my plan is to have three cubbies in the front area because I usually like to use this side for like some of the supplies and things that the kids can get to. My back cubby is always my brain break station or a calm down corner um, or whatever you'd like to call it, but kind of a place for the kids to go if, you know, it's just too much in the classroom for them or they need some quiet time, they need to calm down, whatever it may be. Um, so the kind of the goal behind the brain break station is to keep it um, as, you know, I don't want all my stuff in there because it needs to be, a place where they're calming down right and so we don't want like a ton of stuff <laughs> I don't know how else to say it but so let me show you what I have so far. so I do have um, these up here I don't know if they're gonna stay but those are like little readers for our reading series um, but besides that all I have right now are the two calm down kit like boxes that have you know tools in it for calming down I have a little table and a stool and like a five minute sand counter. Um, and I, there's some things that do need to go up on the wall over here and everything like rules for the brain break station, things like that. Um, but I don't want to add too much more in here because like I said, we don't want things that are distracting them from getting calmed down. So if I do add much more in here, um, hopefully not too much more. I have my library set up exactly how I had it last year. Um, this is, this. these shelves are actually at the top of a desk that I took off, like a teacher desk. And then I just have baskets. Um, although I do need to update the, like, the titles on the baskets because I've gotten a ton more books um, in my return books from last year that my librarian forgot to put away. I mean, see all these extra books that I got. <laughs> so I'm running out of basket room for sure, but I have a ton more like Diary of a Wimpy Kid and Dogman. I've been really looking for graphic novels because that seems to get kids reading that don't actually like to read. My thought for my teacher table being up here. Okay, so normally when I, I do small groups for math, I normally would have my projector up with like the groups and what they're supposed to be doing at each group 
And then I like to have the small group table in front of the board so that I can do the math on the board. So I usually don't even really sit in that chair. Normally the kids fight over who's gonna sit in it. Um, and I have a whiteboard that's going to be installed that'll be this length. So then I'll be able to have, you know, I'll be able to write on the board while the kids are sitting here. And then I also have little whiteboards right there for the kids to use um, while they're with me at small group. I think that's about it for day one. I did a lot of like heavy lifting, moving furniture and things because my classroom had gotten painted um, and then they steam cleaned the carpets and so everything, everything was shoved like up and out of the way. I know I eventually have to get to the bulletins, the bulletin boards, but I'm kind of um, just doing whatever I can to avoid doing it because I just redid them all last year. Honestly, I work best at night. So tip if you are a teacher and a mom like me and you have access to your school, um, most of you probably already know, but there's no one in the school at night usually. And so I don't have people knocking on my door and disturbing me. It's a really good time for me to get work done. I will probably mesh this vlog with my day two because I know I didn't do a ton and I didn't record everything that I did um, but you can at least kind of see the progress as we go through the day so day one I'll do a quick overview again and then we will check back in next time I'm in day two um, this is still in my first classroom setup video but this is my second day in my classroom um, and I had already shown you the progress from the first day so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this board back here I went ahead and I cleared off um, this area back here I didn't put any of it away I just moved it so that I can get this bulletin board put together and that's kind of my plan for tonight it is already after nine o'clock and I just got here. Um, but I, like I said a little bit ago, I like to come in at night when my kids are at home sleeping, my husband's home with them, and I just get some uninterrupted work time. So that's what I'm gonna do tonight. So I'm gonna let you guys watch me struggle. I'm sure it'll be a struggle putting up this bulletin. Um, but yeah, here we go. is much smaller than my board from last year but I thought or well, I knew that I was gonna have to do something like the whole alphabet wasn't going to fit so right now I'm trying to decide do I have the alphabet go like here and along the side you know like start with a like down here and go up over you know that way that way and then down um, or do I just have it go straight across the whole way don't know straight across it is <laughs> So I'm done, I need to get home and get to bed. <laughs> Let me go ahead and show you what I got done today. Okay, so I've got my math alphabet up. And on this is my math board. Now I don't, this is pretty much it, I think, um, because anything else I put on it is going to be things, anchor charts and things that we make together or that go along with a specific unit. This is kind of the stuff I just like to have on 
all the time. So yeah, I'm really happy that that got done. And I was like feeling good about my progress. So I went ahead and put my um, border up here as well. So yay, you know, it's kind of the tedious stuff. Um, so I'm glad that I've got it done. One less thing to worry about. So that is it for days one and two in my classroom setup. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe so that you can keep watching the progress of my classroom. Thanks you guys. See you next time.